So today, the title of my sermon is called The Prodigality of Fatherhood, a.k.a. Prodigal Fathers. What did I say? Prodigality of Fatherhood, a.k.a. Prodigal Fathers. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, if I may ask you, do I look like a woman or I look like a man? And for those of you who might know, do I, am I a mother or am I a father? So I'm talking to myself and I'm talking to them. That's why I wanted them in the front, but they can hear me wherever they are. So the title of the sermon is what? Prodigality of Fatherhood, a.k.a. Prodigal Fathers. Amen. That is the plague that we have in this generation. And the plague is multifaceted. Why is it multifaceted? Fatherhood is not attained by mere biological progression. Fatherhood is not attained by mere biological progression. Fatherhood is not attained by mere sexual activity or incident. Praise the name of the Lord. Biblical fatherhood is attained by adept spiritual nurture and spiritual nurturing. That is why we have an epidemic of prodigality of fatherhood. Because people have reduced it to mere biological progression. Born a boy, become a grown-up, become a man, have a sexual activity, boom, you are a father. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Another reason why the prodigality of fatherhood is multifaceted, it is an ancient trait through stroke trail. There has never in the history of humanity been an exemplary earthly father whom we can emulate. There has never in the history of humanity been an earthly father whom we can emulate. No exemplary father anywhere whom we can emulate. Not even in the Bible. We know the man Eli is a typical case on the study of prodigality of fatherhood. Even King David is a study case on the prodigality of fatherhood. Even Moses, mighty as he was, is a biblical test case of the prodigality of fatherhood. Moses, a mighty man of God, forgot to circumcise his first son. A covenant that was issued to God, by God, to the people of Israel, to distinguish his covenant people. Moses was a G.O. who forgot to channel his son into covenant relationship with the living God. So much so that the angel of the Lord rose to kill that boy. And the mother from the bedtime stories and the lovely, lovely stories she has picked up from Moses knew what the problem was. So she grabbed a stone and circumcised the boy. And he took the first thing and he threw it at Moses. He said, you're a bloody man. What does a bloody man mean? It means you're a real responsible man. You're a man without priorities. You are a man who is chasing out what fame without minding your home front. You are a bloody man to me. That's what the wife told him. You are a bloody man to me. So Moses was a prodigality of fatherhood. Praise the name of the Lord. And you have so many Abra examples. You have Abraham. Amen. He lied and he spitted the lying spirit into Isaac as he spitted the lying spirit into Jacob. Praise the name of the Lord. Prodigality of what? Fatherhood. That's why the issue is multifaceted. Amen. Now, to make matters cryptic and worse, we live in a modern generation where there is an epidemic of prodigal fathers. Where there is an epidemic of prodigality of fatherhood. Especially in this United Kingdom, families are encouraged to break up. If they break up and they are dysfunctional, the more money the women can get based on the number of children they have. So if they have like three or four, they might be better supported by the state. Praise the name of the Lord. 
we have a prodigality of fatherhood. Make no mistake about it, the challenges are enormous. But just as we are continuing, what then is a prodigal father? Or what is the prodigality of fatherhood? We need to define it. Now, you and I are probably very conversant with the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 13, which is about the prodigal son. From that teaching and that context, we can infer a definition of the term prodigal. Therefore, prodigal means to be a squanderer. Say with me, a squanderer. Prodigal means to be a waster. Say with me, a waster. Prodigal means someone who is a misuser of his means, a misuser of his inheritance. And most especially if we are talking spiritual, your inheritance in the Lord. When you are a misuser of your inheritance in the Lord, you are prodigal. Praise the name of the Lord. Prodigal means reckless extravagance. Prodigal means a runaway adult. A runaway adult. A runaway adult. Fugitive from his home. Fugitive in his home. Seen but not hard where it matters. Seen but not hard where God wants him to be hard. Let alone how God wants him to be hard. Because it's another thing to be hard. It's another thing to be hard how you are meant to be hard. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Fugitive means a deserter. In the military, an army deserter can be court martial. It's a military offense. Fugitive means a deserter of family responsibilities. A deserter of family duties. A deserter of family commitments. That prodigal boy example, he was a deserter of family, family business. A deserter of family legacy. A deserter of family commitments. Prodigal means to be a wayward, worldly, carnal fellow. And the list continues. So we now understand better, I hope so, what prodigal means. Then now we want to bring prodigal and fatherhood together. Or therefore bring prodigality in line with fatherhood. Tap that brother and get him to be awake. Every spirit of slumber when he should be awake. We depart from you in the name of Jesus. Look after him and make sure he's awake. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Be thy brother's keeper. Amen. Be thy brother's keeper. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a commandment too. It's not an advice. It's a commandment. It's not what? An advice. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Therefore, we can define prodigal fathers or prodigality of fatherhood as the syndrome or the cases where fathers willfully waste their substance, squander their time and influence and resources and opportunities outside of the family benefit or realm. Prodigal fathers are fathers who are willfully absentee parents or parenting by exception. In project management, we have what we call parenting by exception. Or rather, management by exception. So, prodigal fathers are fathers who parent by exception. Praise the name of the Lord. What are prodigal fathers? Prodigal fathers are fathers who are willfully adulterous, without morals, without integrity, without marital cohesion. Praise the name of the Lord. What are prodigal fathers? Prodigal fathers are those who are who willfully sacrifice their glorious position of fatherhood by neglect and worldliness, by mixed up priorities, by wrong priorities, by even lack of priorities. Praise the name of the Lord. What is a prodigal father? A prodigal father is someone who is willfully awoke. Awo is spelled A-W-O-L. It's an acronym. It's a military word. Awo means away without official leave. Away without official leave. If a military person is away without official leave, they are subject to court martial. 
depending on their reason or circumstance, because commercial is a military court. So if they have reasonable grants for having or being away with without official leave, they might be it might mitigate the sentence. But especially during military conflict or war situation, if we are woe, we can be shot. So prodigal fathers are those who are awoe from church services, awoe from church engagements, awoe from church commitments, away without official leave. You see how your phone is taking control of you? When sleep releases you, your phone catches you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Who are the prodigal fathers? Prodigal fathers are those who willfully sacrifice the souls of their children through lack of moral courage, courage, indifference, neglect, or ineptitude. They are ineptitude as priests in the home. Those are prodigal fathers. Who are prodigal fathers? Prodigal fathers are those who willfully do spiritually as the Philistines did physically in the Bible times. Not looking back or looking out for their children, lacking courage. Jeremiah chapter 47 verse 3. Who are prodigal fathers? Prodigal fathers are those who abdicate their priestly and kingly roles in the realm of Zion. Just like King David did. When there was a war raging about, King David was walking the roof of his house looking for a beautiful woman to sleep with. So there are fathers in the midst of the spiritual war in which the church is embedded. They are feeding their lust, feeding their canal lust. They know all the exposed versions, but they don't know any version of the Bible. If you tell them King James version, they say, I think it's King James that is ruling now. They don't know that you're talking about a version of the Bible. Praise the name of the Lord. But if you want to discuss x boss v boss j boss they know all the versions and all the release of the software on the j x boss Praise the name of the Lord. Those are prodigal fathers. You find the prodigality of David in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1 to 4. Let's quickly read it. Let's quickly read the second Samuel. Amen. Second Samuel. Hallelujah. Samuel is just before kings. I hope somebody knows why that is so. Because the first king of Israel was anointed by Samuel. Amen. Second Samuel 11. Chapter 1. Uh huh. I was wondering. Second Samuel 11, verses 1 to 4. Second Samuel 11, verses 1 to 4. And it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle. So this was a season for kings to go forth for battle, a season for men to engage in spiritual warfare, a season for men to engage in other Bible study, a season for men to lead the the household fellowship, a season for men to leave family devotion, a season when men go into battle to fight off the enemies of God, to fight off the enemies of the children of God, to fight off the enemies of Israel, which the church today is, the Israel of the Lord, that David sent Joab, he sent his wife, when it's time for morning devotion, he said, honey, go and do morning devotion. I'm coming, and he will not come until money devotion is over. He dedicated to his wife. His priestly role, he will dedicate it to his wife. Bible reading role, he will dedicate it to his wife. Church attendance role, he will dedicate it to his wife. Prodigality of what? We are forgetting the topic already. Of fatherhood. Praise the name of the Lord. Prodigality of fatherhood. That David sent Joab, his servants, with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried sea in Jerusalem, his comfort, his comfort zone, his capital. He tarried sea, shuffling his uh, investments where he likes his comfortable. He tarried sea, juggling his job where he makes 50 pounds an hour. He tarried sea, 
looking at his bank draft and his bank balance and his uh, Bitcoin investment. He tarried still. Praise the name of the Lord. And it came to pass in an evening that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of King's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. Woman was very pitiful to look upon, and David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? So David sent her to ask who the woman was. And you see the way they told David. They say, Is she not so so and so wife? In other words, David, stay off. That is a married woman. David, stay off. That way we lead you into a pit. He said, no, I'm the man. I'm the king. Verse 4. And David sent messengers and took her, and he came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. The prodigality of fatherhood. Amen. And when God was chastising David over this incident, David said, God said to him, I gave you even Saul's wife. If those wives were not enough, I would have given you some more. But you now went and took the meat from the soup pot instead of asking to be served on the table. Is that not it? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The prodigality of fatherhood. Fathers who are willingly like fathers of Israel who sacrifice their children to idols in, or in idolatry. Psalm 107 verses 35 to 39. So these are definitions of prodigal fathers or the prodigality of fatherhood. But we have good news. Say with me, good news. You don't want to say. Nonetheless, it is not all tales of doom and gloom. Here enters the gospel. The gospel is always good news. The gospel is what? Always good news. And good news will not be good if there have not been bad news. And good news will not be good if there is not an ambience of bad news. You will not appreciate light if there is no darkness. That's why some of us hardly notice that the light is on. But if it were that time now, you will know that this light is on and you will know that the light is bright. Yes or no? So now we enter the gospel. I told us at the beginning of this sermon that one of the multifaceted nature of the prodigality of fatherhood is that we have never had any earthly example. And I illustrated by, by picking some characters in the Bible who, in spite of their mightiness in their work with God, we are failures in different areas and aspects of being fathers. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So now enters the gospel. And what does the gospel tell us? The gospel tells us that we have Abba, Father. Not just an ordinary father. Abba what? Abba, Father. That word Abba, some have mistranslated it to be daddy. But in the Hebrew word, in fact, the English equivalent has not been found. Abba, Father, is so intimate. It's so intimate. It's like the most intimate of fatherhood. The most intimate of fatherness. The most intimate of a father. The incomparable father. The long-awaited father. The inestimable father, the indescribable father, the father of father, the most glorious of father. That's what the Bible brought us into knowing. Abba, father. And Jesus expanded it. He says, your father, our father, my father. Say with me, your father, our father, my father. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Who has number one to read for us? Yes, stand up and read. I've allocated certain verses. Yes, if you want to use mine, it's your time to shine. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't wait for them. Read, 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 whether they put on their Bible or not. Some of them will refuse to turn their they are, they are already upset. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't let them delay you. Amen. 
Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So that word that our Father was first mentioned and introduced by Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior in Mark, in Mark chapter 14 verse 3. And he said, Abba Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou willest. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Who has got number two? We are bringing into the picture Abba Father, the perfect Father. And we will see the relevance of it as we progress on this one. Amen. Amen. For as many as are led by the Holy Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Sons there means daughters as well, irrespective of your, your gender. They are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Bondage bound by your experience of your earthly father. Bound by your experience of the worldly fathers. Bound by the experience of prodigal fathers. Banned by the experience of the epidemic of prodigality of fathers. You have not received that spirit anymore. What you have received is the spirit of God. By which the spirit of adoption, by which you cry, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. And it's that Holy Spirit that makes you cry, Abba, Father. That makes you crave for the original Father. That makes you crave for the real Father. That makes you crave for the Father God. It's that Spirit that bears witness that you are not fatherless. Say, I'm not fatherless. Say, I am not fatherless. Especially if you are born again. Amen. Amen. Look, your earthly father, if he's alive, he's just a proxy. Especially if you're born again. He's a proxy, proxy father. We are talking about great father. Help me look after your brother. Praise the name of the Lord. Help me look after your brother. Be your brother's keeper. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, we don't have ushers yet. When we get ushers, they will be doing that. But for today, be your brother's keeper. Amen. Amen? Amen. It's a duty I challenge you. Don't, I'm not kidding you. Be your brother's Amen. keeper. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. And God will reward you for your duty of love. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So who has number three? Yes. They are here from like a soldier. Amen. From like a soldier. Like a soldier. Like a soldier. Yes. Galatians chapter 4, verse 6. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba Father. Amen. I like his, I like his body too. Amen. Clap to the Lord. Clap to the Lord now, you people. You know the Bible clap. You know the clap. Amen. We see his body too. Amen. He's a good father in the making. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 He's a prosperity. He's a prosperity father. Amen. And because he has sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Amen. It's good when a lion roars, you know he's a lion. I believe. Yes? God does not give back to what? To strings, things that are strengthy. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. God will bless you, my brother. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Who is God number four? So let me just read. Now, Galatians chapter 4, verse 6. We are pointing out Abba Father. Six, he said, and because ye are sons, that is because you belong to God, because you are born of God. Sister, it's not the time to be smiling at him and distracting him. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
And because ye are God's sons, God has sent for the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Yes, my brother, continue. Yes. Amen. I hope you all heard that clearly. John chapter 20, verse 17. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. That is the Father of Jesus. Amen. For I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Many years ago, when I was just starting out in career as an engineer, my MD used to have a car then on the sticker on the back of it back in Nigeria. He put the sticker and said, Yes, Jesus is my brother. It's taken from this scripture. But go to my brethren. Tell them, I am going to my father, your father. My God, your God. Say with me, I have a father. You are not seeing me sounding convinced. With all the scriptures we have been reading, you are still thinking about your, your Obomosho father. father. Praise the name of the Lord. Say with me, I have a father. Have say it like you mean it. I mean it as you say it. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So next time when there is Father's Day, you know who you should be thinking of. And you know how to be enthusiastic. And you know how to be exuberant. And you will not allow the details of the world and the circumstances of the world intimidate you. The Bible says the righteous shall live by their faith, not by the things they see. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Who's got number five? Yes. Hallelujah. Number five. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You done? Okay. God bless you. Matthew chapter 6, verses 6, verse 8 and 9. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closes. When thou hast shut the door, pray to thy father. To who? To thy father, which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Verse 8. Be not here for therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask of him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I just told us a moment ago that your earthly father is a proxy father. Therefore, a prodigal father is one who misrepresents God to his children and family. A prodigal father is what? One who misrepresents God, misrepresents God to his family and children. He's a prodigal father. I don't care if he's Bill Gates. I don't even care if he's uh, uh, Joe Biden. 
Praise the name of the Lord. I don't even care if it's Elon Musk or the one that owns Amazon. Praise the name of the Lord. And I don't even care if it's one papa of a pope of one ministry. Amen. In fact, no title shall enter heaven. No title what? No title shall enter heaven. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Especially man devised title. No matter how church nice, it has been church nice. Praise the name of the Lord. So we have read those various scriptures. We now know that in spite of and despite of, we have a father. And we have a perfect father. Matthew chapter 5 verse 48. And we know that our perfect father, who is our father in heaven, who is our perfect father, he deserves every honor. According to Philippians chapter 4 verse 20, the Bible says, Now to our father, no, now to our God and father, be glory forever and ever. And a songwriter put it like this. Honor and glory forever. Honor and glory forever. Honor and glory forever. Amen. Honor and glory. Honor and glory forever. Honor and glory forever. Honor and glory forever. Amen. God is our heavenly father. And we earthly fathers, especially born again Christians, we will do well to imitate Jehovah God as our role model in parenting and fatherhood. And Jehovah God is fully expressed in Christ Jesus. He is therefore the model of the kind of fathers any of us should look to be, should seek to be, should represent to our homes and to our children. The Bible recommends it in, Philipp in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21, especially from the J.B. Phillips, Phillips New Testament translation. He says, I fall to my knees before the Father from whom all fatherhood is derived. God is the Father from whom all fatherhood is derived by the corrupted versions. So for any of you as me, Whose father may be dead. Now I want to strike this one. And you will do well to listen. You will do well to listen. For anybody in this church, anybody under the sound of my voice, even those who will hear later, who perhaps is as me, whose father is dead. Whether your father is dead physically, whether your father is dead spiritually, as he is in a chronic unbeliever, or whether your father is dead metaphorically, as in he has walked away, run away from home, become a fugitive. I want you to hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord for people in such circumstances or situation is that you are in a privileged position. You are in a privileged position. Anybody with an earthly father who is corruptly mis misrepresenting God, that person, what they have is an Uzziah over their head. The Bible says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I what? I saw the Lord. So if your father is de physically dead, you are in a good position because you don't have any proxy, you don't have any, any shady thing. You can lift up your head and say, in the day that King Josiah died, I saw the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. If your dad is metaphorically dead, you can lift up your head and say, in the day that King Josiah died, I saw if your dad is backsliding, spiritually dead, become carnal, you can lift up your voice and lift up your head and say, In the day that King Josiah died, I saw the glory of the Lord. So if you are in that position, you are in a good place. That's the word of the Lord from me to you. 
Amen. God has become personally your father. And you can find that in Psalm 65, verse 5. You can find that in James chapter 1, verse 27. You can find that in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 10. You can find that in Psalms 146, verse 9. We are going to take a quick look at James chapter 1, verse 27. Praise the name of the Lord. While we are turning to that page, I want to tell you my personal assurance to people in that situation or circumstances. As long as the Lord gives me a voice and a platform and a position in this church, those who are without fathers of any sort, they are the jewels of this branch. They are what? They are the jewels of this branch. They are the diamonds of this branch. They are the icings on the cake of this branch. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want any of you to whom it may apply, hold your head up and walk tall. Hold your head up and walk tall. No shaking. As they say in Nigeria, nothing they happen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Is anybody in uh, James chapter 1 verse 27? From the smile from one of our sisters, perhaps she wants to read it for us. Amen. Yes, go on. If you're a sister, it's up to you. Amen. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 10. Someone else turn to Psalm 146. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 10. You don't read the Bible sitting down, sir. Is that Ecclesiastes chapter 4? Okay, praise God. Psalm 146, 9. 146, verse 9. The Lord preserved the strangers, he relieved the fatherless and widow, but the way of the wicked, he turned it upside down. Hallelujah. Psalm 68, verse 5. 68, verse 5. Hallelujah. Psalm 68, verse 5. A father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. If that is you, say that is me. Amen. Me, I'm fatherless, so I can always say it is me. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Even if you have an earthly father, it does not stop you from claiming the father with of God. Jesus says, I go to my father and to your father. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So how can it be that we earthly fathers can be able to emulate our father God? To be able to emulate God, as now I'm talking to the fathers and to the prospective fathers and to those who love the fathers and to those who love their husband. They must be born again, by which I mean not political correctness born again, not religiosity born again, not transactional gimmicks born again. Not church employment empowerment program born again. You know there is church employment born again. There is church employment born again. Praise the name of the Lord. Especially in countries where churches are the highest employers. You have church employment born again. Praise the name of the Lord. They are born again as long as they remain in the employment of the church. But the day they get employment in Union Bank, born again, don't finish. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Not cultural born again. 
Some people in Nigeria are born again because it's culturally trending to be born again. And most people in the United Kingdom are not born again because it's not culturally attuned to be born again. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Not self-fully types of born again. As I've always said and reminded us in this church, you cannot fool God. You cannot fool the angels. You cannot fool the devil. You cannot fool demons. The only person you can fool is yourself and anybody who makes the mistake of trusting you. That's the only people you can fool. You can only fool yourself or fool somebody who makes a mistake of trusting you. There is no law in the Bible that says trust one another. Praise the name of the Lord. So trust is a risk assessment you do and place on somebody. It's, you have, it's your own risk assessment. It's not a commandment of God. Praise the name of the Lord. We should love our children as God loves his children if you want to be a father after the other fatherhood. The Bible says in 1 John 3, chapter 1, Behold, what manner of love that the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. So the manner of love and the type of love we are talking about is not just cozy, warmy, fluffy, feeling love. It is a love that places the eternal welfare of our children uppermost in our hearts. The eternal welfare of our children uppermost in our hearts. It is a self-sacrificial love as seen in Romans chapter 5 verse 8 and 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 to 7. What next can we do as fathers? Now I'm proffering solutions to us to emulate the fatherhood of God. We should know our children's needs as God knows the needs of us, his children. Jesus said to said our heavenly father knows the things that we need before we even ask of him. Matthew chapter 6 verses 8 and verse 32. So prodigal fathers are people who are unconcerned, unobservant, inattentive, ignorant, uncommunicative about their children's needs. So if we want to emulate the fatherhood of God, we have to be concerned, we have to be observant, we have to be attentive, we have to be aware, we have to be communicative in respect of our children's needs. Praise the name of the Lord. And of course there's a difference between needs and wants. Amen. Prodigal fathers are non-prayerful for their children. They prefer the trivialities, as our, children, our sister mentioned, of TV games, of rat races, of pawns, of inordinate interest. So if you want to emulate the fatherhood of God, we must refrain from prayerlessness and we must refrain from trivialities of life. Number four, emulating the fatherhood of God for us earthly parents. We should provide for the needs of our children as God provides for his children. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, the Bible says, If anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. That's what we call a uh, uh, mouth, mouth uh, born again. You are born again by mouth. If you have fallen into this ditch, you are born again by mouth. As far as the Bible says, you say you have denied your faith. Not only have you denied your faith, you are worse than unbelief. It doesn't matter whether you are a pastor or you are leading the choir or you are leading the uh, whatever you are leading in church. You are just say born again by mouth. Say born again by mouth. You are not saying it. You are, you, you are protecting them. Say born again by mouth. That's what the scripture says, born again by man. It is such a heightened state of irresponsibility that anybody who has fallen into it is seen by heaven as not even a born again, as worse than a born again. So within our human abilities, within our human capabilities, by the grace of God upon our life, we must seek to provide for our children and for our homes. And provision is not just only in material things. Provision is in cancer. Provision is in leadership. Provision is in protection. Provision is in advice. Amen. Number five, how we can emulate the fatherhood of God. We should discipline our children as God disciplines us as children. For whom the, the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son, in whom he delights. Proverbs 3, 32. The Bible, the, the Bible says, God disciplines the son. 
whom he loves, just as a father will do. In Proverbs 13, 24, the Bible says, He who spears rod hates his son. He who loves him disciplines him promptly. Sometimes you get a conflict between mothers and fathers. The mothers think we're spearing the rod means love. The Bible is saying, he who spears the rod hates his children. It's hatred not to correct them. It's hatred not to discipline them. It's hatred to be cheering them on a path of destruction. It's hatred, according to the scriptures. Number six, we should forgive our children as God forgives us his children. There are conditions, of course, for forgiveness, including repentance and praying and asking for forgiveness, according to Acts chapter 8, verse 22. Mark 6, 14 to 15, and Mark 11, verses 25 to 26. Nonetheless, we earthly fathers, if we are minded to emulate the fatherhood of God, we should be disposed to forgiving our children as God forgives us. It is inevitable that in the fully of childhood, in the affrontery of youth, children will disobey their fathers and even bring shame and spite and grief and embarrassment upon their fathers. But we must genuinely resolve to be like Jesus, forgiving them from our hearts. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So in summary of today's this thing, I have not come to pamper us and beat us at, at the, and they stroke us at the back. In this church, for example, one of the frustrations of being a pastor is that you reach out to grab a brother and it's like you're grasping the head. It's not there. Try to grasp him for one responsibility, for one task. You're like grasping the head. You try to reach out to grab a brother. He's receded. It's like hidden in a dark cave. You can't grasp him. This church today, by the grace of God, the pillars are our women folk. The pillars of this church so far is our women folk. That prodigality has to stop. Don't be a born again by mouth. If heaven has written you off that you have denied the faith, you need to repent. Like I say, you can't fool God. You can't fool angels. You can't fool the devil. You can't fool demons. You can fool me oh, because I'm not as smart as I may look in this message. Praise the name of the Lord. This one is just packaging. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. This one is just packaging. You can fool me. You can fool yourself. That's the only two people you can fool. But I don't count because I'm not going to judge you. And if you cannot fool the person who will judge you, you're in trouble if you don't want to make your way straight before the Lord. And if you cannot fool the enemy of your soul, you're also in trouble because all those are shenanigans doesn't put him off. Amen. There is a reason why Jesus built his church originally on a gang of 12 men, imperfect as they were. There was a reason why he did that. Praise the name of the Lord. And I probably said it in this church before. The day we find 12 committed, diligent members in this church, this church will explode because Jesus started the church with 12 disciples. The day we find, whether they be men or women, whether they be men or women, because in Christ there is no gender. That's another mystery of the New Testament. So if somebody is just saying, I'm a man, I'm a man, that one no count for New Testament. If you don't arise, in your spiritual position as a man, you will be overtaken by a physical woman who spiritually is a man in the realm of the things that God does. You can see this message finds its relevance in the in the in the what happened today. Because the women were going to throw the church into disarray by throwing it to the men. Wanted to throw the church into this array by throwing it to the men. Thank God for Sister Ruth that I grabbed her and, and the commanded her to start the service. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
So men, boys, please rise up to your God ordained position. Take your position. Be the man God wants in the church. Stop the prodigality. Set yourself apart from the world. You are in the world, you are not in the world. You are not of the world. The prodigality we see in the community should not be allowed to infiltrate into the church of God. There is so much prodigality of fatherhood in community, especially in this modern community, in this UK community, that legally there is no definition of head of household now. In legal language. That is not the structure of God. It's sad that he grabs to get a man, he grabs the air in the things of God. And I will reiterate and encourage those of us who have no proxy fathers. We are in a good deal because we can lift up our heads and lift up our voice and say, in the day that King Josiah died, I saw the glory of the Lord. Amen. On that note, let's take some a few prayer points. Hallelujah. If you like, pray. If you like, don't pray. Father God, turn the hearts of the fathers in this church into hearts of flesh. Now it's intercession for those of you that are not fathers. Intercede for them, and God will reward you. Praise beautifully in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, turn the hearts of the fathers in this church into hearts of flesh in the name of Jesus. Father, turn the hearts of the fathers in this church into hearts of flesh in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, turn the hearts of the fathers in this church into hearts of flesh. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. O oh Lord our Father, teach us fathers in this church how to be father after the order of your fatherhood in the mighty name of Jesus. O oh Lord, teach us fathers in this church how to be fathers after the order of your fatherhood in the name of Jesus. Father, teach us fathers in this church how to be God fathers in the order of your fatherhood. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. O oh Lord our Father, for any child in this church, whose earthly father is either dead, metaphorically, spiritually, or physically, as never to return, we ask that you will be their father in all ramifications in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you will be their father in all ramifications in the mighty name of Jesus, that you will be their father, appearing to them even in open and closed vision, appearing to them even in their sleep and in their dreams, appearing to them, oh Father, even in circumstances and conditions of life, appearing to them whether they turn to the left or turn to the right, whether they look front or they are looking back. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Oh God, I honor you as Abba Father. Be thou exalted always in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Father God, we honor you as Abba Father. Be thou exalted always in our lives in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we honor you as Abba Father. Be thou exalted. 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 In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The last but not the least of the five prayer points on this occasion. Oh Lord, bless every father in this church. And let them guide children and youth to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, God bless every father in this church and guide and let them guide children and youth to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord and personal God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On that note, let's conclude by singing this song. I have a father. He will never ever fail me. I have a father who will ever ever fail me. Jesus is my father. He will never ever fail me. Rock of ages, ever ever, never ever fail. I have a father. He will never ever fail. I have a father who never ever fail.